Hello and welcome to my presentation entitled Smith Stochastic Model of Intratumor Heterogeneity. My name is Adam Streck. I'm from Max Dahlberg Center for Molecular Medicine in Berlin. And this is the result of my collaboration with my colleagues Tom Kaufman and Roland Schwartz from the Berlin Institute from Foundation of Learning and Data and from the Institute for Computational Cancer Biology in Cologne. Uh, we have published this research earlier this year in bioinformatics and here I would like to summarize our results. So as the title suggests, we are presenting a new model of intratumor heterogeneity. So the question arises, what is intratumor heterogeneity? In short, uh, the idea is that as cancer grows, uh, you accumulate additional mutations in the cells inside of the tumor, which then have different genomic profiles and therefore inside of the tumor you have genomic heterogeneity. Uh, it's also typical to refer to groups of cells with same or similar genomic profile as clones. Uh, the term is not completely well established or well defined. We are using the term clone to refer to group of cells which share the set of so-called driver mutations, so the mutations that are somehow affecting their ability to grow or to compete with other cells inside of the same tumor. Mm. Generally, the process of the accumulation of the driver mutations and the competition inside of the tumor and generally the growth of clones is not completely understood. There are some theories, uh, some of them are slightly in competition to each other. And this is the concept that we are studying. Uh, why is it difficult to actually investigate is uh, first, you don't have most of the history of the tumor. We usually detect them around 1 billion cells, so 10 to the power of 9, uh, or even later. So for most of the history of the tumor, we don't know what's happening there. And even after we detected those tumors, uh, it is difficult to obtain longitudinal data. We usually have only one sample at the time of the biopsy or at the time of the treatment, uh, you would normally not allow the tumor to grow uninterrupted. So you can obtain multiple data points over time. So if you want to discover the history of the tumor, one option is to simulate. So to start with the initial configuration of a healthy cell or population of healthy cells and try to get to the final configuration of where you were sampling the tumor and if you match that there is a chance that the process of the simulation somehow represents the process of the growth of the tumor that you were sampling there are two approaches for the simulation and for the modeling one very abstract or uh, very uh, coarse uh, that represents the populations as random processes it, which is very fast to compute but usually does not really allow to model a lot of relevant biological assumptions, a lot of relevant biological phenomena. The other very typical uh, approach is on the other side using so-called cellular automata or lattice-based models, where you model individual cells or uh, individual clones in their spatial environment and interaction with other clones based on their spatial vicinity. Uh, which is much more relevant, much more representative to the process itself, but is also much more difficult to compute. Uh, these are both, of course, abstractions to a degree. There are, uh, of course, also additional model types, but these two are typically being used in the field. Uh, and we have aimed to address the shortcomings of both of these by creating somehow a third category existing somewhere in between. So we started with the branching model, with the population model, um, and added algebraic formulation of the spatial constraints so that we can also capture the biological phenomena that are normally only existing in the cellular automata-based models. The algebraic formulation of space we refer to as a confinement. And the idea is that if you have a solid tumor, you have a group of cells that are confined so they exist on the inside of the tumor and because they are on the inside and have a space to grow, they don't have access to resources 
and they are not very likely to divide or even survive. They slowly become necrotic. And on the other side, you have the free cells, unconfined ones that are in the shell of the tumor, that do have the resources, that do have the space to grow. And those are the ones that continue dividing. And this creates some sort of a spatial restriction and some sort of competition onto the branching process model of cancer. Uh, this has the advantage that it's very fast to simulate. You can also create parameters that are related to the biological processes. So we can basically parameterize based on the size of the shell and there is some sort of a geometric interpretation of your parameters. And it also dampens the exponential growth, uh, which is a problem of the branching process where basically unrestricted growth means that you will very quickly explode exponentially into the final configuration. Uh, the one limitation of this model compared to the cellular automata is that there is no representation of locality. So there is no distance metric between individual subclones. Uh, however, we can to a degree simulate locality by a process that we refer to as a local confinement. So our confinement has two components. One is the global one where we restrict the population of the tumor generally by its size, by the size of the whole tumor. And then there's the local part of the confinement where we restrict the growth of individual clones based on the size of the clone itself. And for most realistic cases, we basically mixed the two of them. Given our model, we can then run a lot of simulations. We can compare the effects of these local and global confinement parameters. Uh, here we have four scenarios. The first one on top is no confinement, which leads to this uh, quite uninteresting process where basically each clone exists on its own. The newer clones that have more driver mutations will eventually start taking over more population uh, because they just grow faster, they have a bit of a higher fitness. But due to the exponential nature of this process, by the time you reach your target population for our simulations, that was 1 billion cells, uh, you pretty much uh, did not have a chance to actually observe any sort of a clone sweep, any sort of a replacement of later clones uh, or, or early clones by the later clones. Uh, this is something you get if you use only the global confinement, which restricts the growth uh, by the population size. And when new clones that have higher fitness appear, then they have the chance to overtake the previous clones. And by that, you start accumulating the driver mutation. So at the time you reach the final population, you have already fixed several generations of driver mutations inside of your population. The third option, which is not a biologically realistic one, but we also include it here to show the effect, is that you have only the local confinement. So you are only restricting based on the size of the clones, not by the size of the whole population. Uh, this will lead into wide branching, where basically because of the local restriction, the newer clones have a chance to very easily catch up to the later clones uh, that are self-restricting. And you will just get this very, very wide diversity in your population. And the most realistic, the most representative model from our perspective is the one that mixes both the local and the global confinement, where you also observe this type of evolution that we refer to as linear to branched evolution, where in the beginning you have these clonal sweeps, you fix a certain sequence of driver mutations uh, by basically replacing the newer clones with uh, the older clones by the newer ones. And once you reach a certain size, you start this branching where basically uh, some of the mutations are already fixed, but now you're starting also to observe localized variety among your newer clones that have the chance to coexist. Uh, this again is for, from our perspective, the most realistic scenario. As I said, it's hard to observe longitudinal data in the tumors themselves. But given the genomic profile of tumors and also from uh, communications that we have with other researchers, this seem to be somewhat representative to what nowadays a lot of researchers are expecting to observe in or would have been expecting to observe in the data if the data were available. Uh, we also validate our approach by comparing our research to uh, biological data. We have taken uh, the data provided by uh, 
Noble et al. in their 2022 nature paper that was uh, modeling the populations using cellular automata, uh, where they provided six different cancer types and basically match their uh, cell automata simulation to the data we have done the same, but with our Smith model. And you can see that you, you can obtain distributions that correspond to different cancer types by just varying the global and the local confinement parameters. And also the variation of the parameters corresponds to what we would expect on the biological level. So on the top left, you have leukemia, uh, where there is basically no confinement, no restriction. Uh, you have the cancer cells in the blood. And we then generally just don't observe much of either diversity or accumulation of mutations. Uh, then you have, uh, for example, the kidney cancer, uh, which is more of a single uh, unit, single block of cells. So there is a high local confinement due to space, but uh, not much of a localization. And basically just by using the global confinement, we can match the kidney cancer. On the other hand, you have breast and lung cancer, where you have these small ducts uh, or um, general regions where the, the cancer can grow into in, in small groups. And there you can see that by combining both the global and the local confinement, we can match the biological data as well. And the last example here is the uveal cancer, uh, um, which is heavily restricted due to the limited space in the eye. So there's a very high uh, global confinement, which then leads to the high accumulation of the driver mutations, which we again see, see in our data. Uh, we can also say that even though our simulations are very simplistic they contain almost no randomization uh, they basically just select the mutations and randomize the population growth and death we observe very widely varying trajectories uh, so even though we have one of the simplest possible models for the system we are displaying uh, just basically by the effect of a mutation and then by the timing of mutations we can see that uh, despite our results at 1 billion cells kind of cluster around the same region of the of the graph you can get a lot of different trajectories that will get there in very varying ways uh, which leads us to suggest that it's particularly the timing of mutation that co contributes to the variety between the cancers when they are sampled in patients. Or that would be one of our hypotheses about what could be happening in the real systems. Uh, second observation that we have made with our model uh, is that there have been uh, many different proposals for how to sample the effect of a mutation, how to change the fitness of a cell based on uh, based on the sampling and different authors use different distribution, in particular exponential distribution, normal distribution, uniform distribution, and just using one constant number. And we have shown that in our model, again, a very simplistic model, uh, the selection of the distribution matters. So uh, for the, for the, uh, pre for the global and confined models, you basically will see significant differences in your results based on which underlying distribution you select, even though the mean fitness difference remains the same. So here are comparisons of the four distributions with this always with the same mean. And you can see that as soon as we introduce the fitness by the global or local confinement, suddenly we see strong significant differences between the different distributions. So our uh, conclusion would be that the underlying distribution of fitness effect matters to your simulation. And that's everything from me. I'm happy to discuss this uh, research during the conference. Uh, also, we have the paper out and uh, our simulators available online. Also, our group uh, at ICCB in Cologne is hiring. 
So if you're interested in this type of research, uh, feel free to apply. Thank you very much.